flushed. Throws it down. Cut by Boston College. I don't believe it. That was one of, if not the most famous Hail Mary passes of all time. The Miracle of Miami, Doug Flutie's BC College beat Miami Hurricanes in the 1984 Orange Bowl. You may ask why I'm talking about this. Believe me, I'm getting to a point. There's a piece in the Atlantic that says Trump's legal team would need three straight Hail Mary passes for it to succeed in overturning the election results. Now, as the president and his supporters continue to say that there was widespread fraud, they have yet to present any shred of any evidence. Maybe that's because it just does not exist. The Times calling election officials in every state, both Republican and Democrats alike, every single one of them saying they aren't seeing any fraud or irregularities that impacted the results. Now, Trump's attorneys, they're also calling for recounts, and they've got one going even in Georgia, even though Biden doesn't even need that state to win. Even Karl Rove, Karl Rove, who we spoke about earlier in the program because he says Trump should concede, says recounts sometimes change maybe hundreds of votes, but never thousands, let alone the tens of thousands the president would need to overturn results in a single state. My next guest, she's been writing extensively about Trump's lawsuits, but also the consequences of what he's doing. Her latest piece, The Real Threat of Trump's Ridiculous Coup Attempt. Let me bring in our guest, Daya Lithwick, she's the senior editor at Slate Magazine, where she's also the Supreme Court reporter. And Daya, don't want to waste much time on it because it's really a waste of time, but there is no scenario, through the courts at least, that you see viably that any proof of fraud, let alone on a massive widespread level, could undo the results of the election. No, uh, I think that it's a mistake to even think of this in terms of 2000 and Bush v. Gore. It is not comparable where you were talking about 327 votes in Florida that make the difference. That's the pivot that the entire election turns on. Here, you've got multiple states. So even if one of these Hail Mary lawsuits, say in Michigan or in Pennsylvania, were to succeed, uh, there's just no possibility of having, uh, you know, recounts and then getting a couple, picking off a couple hundred ballots. And we're talking about thousands and thousands of votes are in the margins in multiple states. So it's, it's a mistake to think of this in terms of of Bush v. Gore. I think the way to think about it, as you said, is kind of a bunch of Hail Marys, throwing a bunch of spaghetti on the walls in a bunch of states, and slow walking the certification. Okay, so if we agree the result will be the same and it's delaying the inevitable, it doesn't mean that there's not real damage uh, being done here. And I'll give you my real concern, Di, and I know you wrote about uh, a few of those, but if all of a sudden, States uh, where you'll have the state legislature um, being, let's say, of a different party than that voted for, for Biden here of the general population. And now we're starting to get into a world of electors not following uh, the will of the people, if you will, of the vote. You know, can we have, I said this line yesterday, uh, you know, we, we don't get to have any good things. I mean, we can't even trust an election. People try and make it illegitimate, and now people won't even follow the votes when you get to electoral college. I mean, are there any norms that we can count on anymore? I think it's useful to think in terms of, you know, the scenario you're describing is not uh, completely fanciful, right? Bart Gelman wrote about this in The Atlantic uh, at the beginning of the fall, and everybody flew into a panic that what happens if you have the state electors, the state uh, legislatures in states that have a Democrat for a governor and Republican-controlled legislature, and what if they just throw out the results of the vote and say, we're going to pick the electors because either we just hate Joe Biden or because this election has become tainted and muddied. And I I think there is certainly a scenario in which that happens. And um, Bart Gelman interviewed people in the Trump camp who were kind of poking at that. It is so wholly illegitimate. I think everybody who has read the Federal Electors Act of 1877 or whatever the legislation that was passed after Tilden Hayes would tell you it's such a long shot that it's not probable. I think the larger question is, and I think this is undergirding what you're asking, all of these efforts, whatever it is, whether it's having the state legislature steal the election, whether it's fomenting distrust so that you have massive numbers of people who say the election was stolen, 
all of this effort to muddy the water eventually either leads to huge lack of confidence in elections themselves, elections, by the way, that went off without a hitch, and also makes it really hard for Biden to govern. And that's the thing that I think is underneath all this kind of cosplay about, oh, we're going to file lawsuits and everybody's going to get mad and say the election was stolen. There are genuine interests here about a peaceful transition and about confidence in voting. And those are the places where I think abiding damage can happen. You know, Di, or, earlier uh, this program, uh, I spoke to Senator Von Hollen, who's talking about what's going on in the Senate and some of the enablers uh, for this president. But how... I, I don't want to spend an hour relitigating Bill Barr. I, I still don't know what happened to him. But the idea that even in the 11th hour, even after he wouldn't play some of the reindeer games the president wanted him to, that now he's, you know, basically putting DOJ in the middle of it again. Uh, tell me there's some comeuppance that'll come for these folks who knew better and still went along um, again, with our Department of Justice, and we saw resignation consequentially because of it. Yeah, I think that for those of us who had noted that Bill Barr had gone really silent in the last couple of months, that, don't forget, this summer he was making the same cockamamie claims that the president was making. He was saying, oh, you know, by definition, mail-in ballots are corrupt and foreign governments are going to steal them and stuff the ballot box. All that was happening. And I thought, my God, Bill Barr is all in for this. And then, as you'll note, he went really quiet, right? Very silent. The foiled Durham report that was supposed to indict all sorts of people in the Obama administration uh, fizzled out. And the foiled unmasking uh, investigation, which nobody even knew what it was about, fizzled out. And suddenly, Barr went really quiet. And then, all of a sudden this week, having been dead silent for weeks, Here's Barr authorizing at the highest level the Justice Department to investigate what he says are serious, if there are serious allegations, and that's in total violation of the Justice Department's own guidance. The Justice Department is not allowed to meddle in elections while uh, voting is still pending. And it really did feel like a kind of a Hail Mary on top of the Hail Mary, where he was simply, in some sense, giving himself cover and saying, well, I'm just authorizing it. I'm not doing anything. As you noted, the most senior person in the election crimes uh, bureau quit immediately rather than be involved with that. But I think, again, it's of a piece with this larger move of given the option to walk away, to be the adult in the room, to say, it's over, I'm not going to implicate myself further, I'm not going to further degrade my reputation, we see all of them instead doubling down and saying, let me make it a little more stupid right before I hit the exit. And it's, in Barr's case, just baffling. And like I said, for the amount of folks who fit in that category, who knew better, um, and chose to get in a romper room. We have uh, we got a lot of uh, friends here that Bill Barr can look around that room with who should know better uh, but didn't act on it. I tell you, always great talking to you. I appreciate the time. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, when we come back, we're going to discuss the possible dangers of Trump's shakeups when it comes to the Pentagon, also his refusal to even do the basic cooperation with the Biden transition. We'll be talking with ABC News political director Rick Klein after this.